Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop in this uh, near winter, as witnessed by the blood red countenance of my hands. I assure you, there is nothing wrong with my health, uh, healthy and hale, uh, twisted steel and sex appeal, as possibly witnessed by my wife. However, speaking of frozen shitholes, snatched from the clutches of the Pandora's box, some things men just don't need to know. In the wife's bedside table, we have here a Borsch Easy Curve Sander, Pers ostensibly for bunion removal, but quite clearly a personal massager. What uh, could be handed to dear sweet Nana on karaoke night and she'll be singing hallelujah in no time flat. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Who else is positively gagging for old Uncle Bumblefuck to lose a finger? It never does well on those bags. It's the fibrous part. Cocks up the dust clockworks and sprinkin' sprinkin'. Ooh. Sorry about that. Oh, look at that, it was already open. Ah, it's just like my wife when I go to the shooting range, I'm sure of it. Time! Huh. Oh! <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I am a 12-year-old boy. The uninitiated amongst us might question my qualifications to review such a device. I can tell you, as a self-identified woman of color, what an age we live in, purple, I am distinctly qualified to run this. In fact, I, I consider myself a lesbian trapped inside a man's body, much like most men. I get into a room with uh, beautiful uh, women and having uh, smart and uh, witty repartee. All I want to do is eat pussy. Lesbians, we get along just fine. I eat what they eat. We have a Gillette model razor of a uh, tool. Not only do we have to buy, once they get you locked into buying the... Uh, the batterias, they also get you locked into buying these proprietary borsch abortions. And these don't look like they'd last all that long, but Robert Borsch, no flies on him, partner. Back in the 1800s, uh, he, he got in making automotive, well, first he was an instrument maker in Germany, uh, a precision instrument. You know, you see beautiful instruments in the museum and they're all uh, copper and bronze and a beautifully made it. Hey, it, he did that sort of stuff. But he saw an opportunity where the horseless carriage was coming in and they needed ignition systems. So he started building, as an instrument maker, ignition systems. And it just so happens he made the, arguably, the best ignition systems for early automobiles and uh, took off from there. He actually, I read the, his corporate propaganda uh, biography real interesting cat if and you want to uh, essentially super hard working and uh, expected a lot from his employees but he treated them really well uh gave him sundays off nobody else used to give him sundays off half day saturday uh medical care and apprenticeship programs so the apprenticeship system is one of the best ways to learn technical information because you're standing at the elbow of a master at the weekend, a babysitter was procured, and the better three quarters aired me out to a ladies' auxiliary craft sale. And I can tell you with precision that this tool is marketed towards older ladies. It seemed to have a, a little problem with not only drying out like the Sahara, but much like the Sahara, also being rather sandy. So we'll put this in. Well, Harlequin Romance, Fifty Shades of Grey, and Aquaman fan, <laughs> what do they call that? Fan art. <laughs> oh, that's, that's quite aggressive there. That's a little advanced for my liking. We'll start off slow. Oh, yeah. And that, that will nicely remove the uh, patina from any lady part you might put in there. You can see off uh, my baby soft hand here, we're removing some callus and skin flakes in general. 
Oh, now that is smooth. <coughs> Look at those skin flakes. Even mine are disgusting. I know, it's not just, well, mainly people, but let's have this A part. Well, yeah, I think we've success successfully demonetized this entire procedure by now. From the outward appearance, this is a, a not a professional grade tool. This is a, a homeowner grade tool. No fasteners at all for the uh, clamshell. And the, the only fasteners to be found is in the head of her. So let's take this apart and see if the gears are metal or ply, uh, plastic. And it looks like some calcium sulfonate grease in there. But you see, metal injection molded pinion. So that'd be sintered metal. And that's the only piece of metal on her. The bushes themselves, the bushings, the bearings for the back of the gears, even though the shaft is metal, the bushing, plastique. So this is really not uh, uh, long for this life. It's not a high grade of tool, not set up for lots of torque or lots of use. One interesting thing, directly coupled to the pinion because this is metal instead of this what is this high density now pom we have a pa6 glass ball reinforced 30 percent if you recall on the uh, rapid onset lead poisoner pew pew the glock from austria and this where's this made probably hungry yeah yeah designed in germany stuttgart and made in Hungary. So Stuttgart, uh, very, lots of automotive parts, so it's, well, yeah, there's just design going on there, so yeah, uh, that doesn't make, never mind, never mind, forget I said that. Uh, PA6, so that's nylon, glass ball, reinforced 30%. In that Aust uh, Austrian firearm, we had that same thing, I didn't touch on it, but because, um, the thin wall section is so thin. What they do is they use glass ball instead of glass fiber. And that also you could see in the handle, there was no uh, whitening out from the, the, the alignment of the glass fibers. Also in the top note with the, the burning test, we could smell some carbon black. You see, they're not too concerned about the color. So just a bit of carbon black in there. And they're not real worried about it uh, getting charcoaled out, kind of kind of washing out that black. But on that pistol, that $800 pistol, they were supremely concerned with that and very likely glass ball in there instead of glass fiber. Lots and lots of carbon black. Now there's one reduction here already into this nylon gear and into these ac acetal acetyl. These are Delarin gears, so palm is uh, poly methyl something it, chemist a german chemist won the nobel prize for developing this in the 50s the early 50s which is all the more amazing considering that this would have been developed in the very after war you know when when germany the uh, industrial capacity of germany is completely fucking fuckered and he develops this uh, for BASF, develops this uh, Delarin plastic. Where was I going? Oh, yeah, also, that's very interesting that this would be uh, Delarin. It, it ties in well with this calcium sulfonate grease because Delarin is very prone to uh, acid attack and, and chemical attack. You know, you never want to use Delarin for any kind of uh, piping that involves water or anything with any kind of chlorine, it gets attacked, any kind of acid gets attacked. So it's, it's, this, it's been around for a long, long time and it's very easy to mold. And it's also very lubricitous, self-lubrifactant, uh, but we have some calcium sulfonate grease in there because we do have a metal gear and we also have uh, nylon. We got 11 herbs and spices in the casement here. Very likely this is some sort of ABS or low grade of nylon and they're acting as the bushes. So we, you know, you want this thing to at least get a couple hours of use out of it before uh, she goes right into the fuck it bucket. You gotta hit that bathtub curve. Now the central hub, well shaft, appears to be molded directly into the casement and that is not the case for the moving elements because 
there on a ball and socket. So when you spin this on the ball and socket, the gear spins. That means that there has to be a universal joint in here to allow for some axial misalignment. We're going to see if we can't, uh, well, two out of three still ain't bad. If that'll come out, or it's got to come out the other way. Oh, look at that. Brilliant. Witness now the power of engineering. You go ahead and pat yourselves on the back if you're of that bent. This, uh, yeah, this is a fascinating display of design work. There's some, probably a, a team of chairmen's working on this and they did a fantastic job because it's built down to a price and it yeah it's incredible so here is the pad itself and it's not a ball and socket in there but it is it does have these little latches and then it's driven through these dogs here through these drive dogs and it's allowed to rotate around in a ball and socket joint. Now there's a bearing, just a, a deep groove ball bearing, a tiny one in there off the shelf. And then it's inside a sleeve that's part of the ball and socket. Now internal, that's actually driving it, is this little shaft with a pin through it. And if you have a look real close and see, that is not a machine shaft. It's a metal injection molded part. So the cheapest manufacturer available, but these, this pin cannot, cannot be straight cut across. It has to be on a hemisphere because the center of this bearing, if it wasn't on a hemisphere, it would fetch up. It's quite tight in there. If you, if you have a look, there's not all that much clearance. And as you uh, turn this socket, it changes the radius of the inside of that bearing. So uh, yeah, that's fucking brilliant. Just clacks in like that. And a very simple mechanism, brilliant. It's an, a, yeah. They ain't dumb, those guys. So the other problem we have with uh, acetyl, uh, uh, Delarin, palm, here you go, palm, is that, and you'll notice there's no glass fiber reinforcing or anything, is it doesn't bond to things well. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't want to stick to things. So what they've had to do was very likely this shaft got, uh, in, uh, got put in the injection mold and then the palm got injected, in, it got manufactured in place in situ around that shaft. While this is built down to a price, the mold making and injection molding technology, awe inspiring. Something on a consumer grade device. And look at that pocket in there. Absolutely perfect. Perfect. That is an art and science unto itself, mold making and injection molding. And despite, uh, while well, they're making it in Hungary, which is you know, European, but maybe Eastern European, so a little lower down on the pay scale for, for the factory workers. But at the same time, very, they're still churning out very high quality consumer items. An interesting artifact of the value engineering. Uh, clearly somebody's gone through this with a fine tooth comb, finding nits to pick out. This bore, way huge huge i'm talking the best the biggest the hugest see that shaft there it's floating in there like a hot dog down a hallway there's got to be another bearing in order to locate this this very likely is only locating it uh, axially and not radially choking on my tongue tangulation there i also bit my tongue son of a diddly for being a chintzy little home gamer tool this is beautiful they, they, they've the attention to detail here. So they've over molded a flexure, a, um, a compliance structure in order to actuate the switch. You see here, just a little tactile switch, cheap old little tactile switch on a board. You see they've over molded that and left in some uh, spring of things in order to uh, bring that back to neutral. And the board, all kinds of celastic on there in order to rigidify a couple little light pipes here. 
Following the dance and pass for the pixies out of their uh, confinement receptacle, we go th in through these terminals and there's two additional sensing terminals here. One is temperature and one is a balance line. It's interesting that they would bother sending the balance line to the confuser in here, but apparently if any of the cells gets out of balance, that is one has more voltage than another, then very likely the confuser would shut her down. This is really fucking nice. You can tell the people who designed this and who are assembling it take pride in their work. And in this day and age, I mean, hard to come by, quite frankly. Beautifully soldered, all kinds of adhesive celastic on there for the uh, potentiometer, the, the, well, not potentiometer, uh, the three, 10 or 12 little detents on there ribbon cable into the board itself. We have some uh, operational amplifiers and ST micro devices. So this would be an atma, uh, no, it's ST. <laughs> I'm getting mixed up. Uh, here we have some sort of driver board for the MOSFETs and the MOSFETs provide the switching for the DC motor. Of course, you don't have any reversing action on this guy. And then we have a big resistor here, probably to check the uh, monitor, the current going to the motor so that if it stalls out uh, or if it shorts out, this guy uh, opens up and stops sending it to chooch. We had a couple of surface mount capacitors. Not much to it. Nicely, uh, as I say, nicely made, very nicely made. It's elastic all through and conformally coated, all name brand items. Somebody took some pride in their work and it's, it's beautiful to see. Here's the motor itself, bog standard, laser etched uh, actuator. We could look that number up, but it's likely a five volt motor. We've got a little flux ring on here, it's brushed. Bushing in the back, just an oil light uh, bushing. Well, it's a bearing, but it's oil light. It's oil impregnated. And um, as this shaft spins up, we get um, hydrodynamic slip happening because the, there's a slight layer of oil in there builds up a little pressure and then this shaft floats on a wedge of oil. And on the front side, oil light bushing as well. And here we see the pinion with a, a modicum of copper impregnating in order to uh, help lubrification. Now we just have some ceramic, four pull ceramic magnets in the body itself and a little holder, which is also uh, glass fiber reinforced nylon. Nice to see because that's uh, good for, uh, for high temperatures. And of course the motor's gonna get hot. So you don't want that uh, getting too soft and kind of mushing out everywhere. You see the difference here in the molding and the material. I was mistaken, this is not ABS plastique. It's nylon and it's very well molded and expensive. This went together pretty tight. Some shielded air inlets here. You see the lack of fasteners is really affecting the clamshell at the back end here. Not great, but that's the lack of fasteners. I think that's pretty much it. We can get that back together and then give her a proper hot supper. In keeping with the theme, we'll just do some hand finishing on my big prototype tool here. Uh, full chooch. Key, well, I don't see what could possibly go wrong. Ah, yeah, see, that's kind of janky there, but, eh. Cure duct. Palette art. Sell it at the craft fair. I'll be a hundred air in no time. <laughs> this, this thing is the most beautifully designed, useless piece of junk. It only tickles at the very first and then, then it feels pretty good. You have to be some grade of degenerate wood elf to need something like this, uh, you know, underpowered, anemic, going around curves and leaves uh, squirrely cues all over the place. Probably nobody's real cup of tea, but um, hey, I bought it. <laughs> Thanks for watching.
keep your dick in a on the uh, 